The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are wrapping up our uh, campaign. That's right, we are finishing off uh, the, the Forgotten Age campaign with the uh, Shattered Aeons, our playthrough uh, with uh, Ursula Downs. This is a blind playthrough. Believe it or not, I have not had a chance to uh, play this scenario yet due to various circumstances, so I am uh, happy to bring it to you today. Let's take a look at uh, where we are uh, in the campaign. Ursula Downs, uh, as you may remember, she earned uh, four experience points uh, from the Depths of Yoth scenario, so I used that uh, experience points to purchase Grotesque Statue and uh, I removed a, a copy of uh, Perception from the deck. So here is our deck going into the final scenario. We have two grotesque statues, two discs of its Omna. We've got Dr. Mylan Christopher in there, uh, as well as a couple copies of Hyper Awareness, our Higher Education, our Charisma, and then uh, our Event Package, which includes I've Got a Plan, Emergency Cash, Logical Reasoning, Shortcut, and uh, Unearth the Ancients. And our skills include Deduction, Inquiring Mind, Manual Dexterity, and Unexpected Courage. We've got uh, four treacheries in our deck. Call of the Unknown, of course, which uh, is a real pain in the ass. Uh, drawing the Sign, Out of Body Experience, which we picked up in uh, the City of Archives, which we have not drawn yet. And, uh, of course, our uh, basic weakness, which is uh, one of the worst ones, that being Overzealous. Here's a look at our uh, supplies. Uh, at the end of uh, the Depths of Yoth, you remove all of your provisions and medication, I believe. So we just have a blanket, binoculars, compass, rope, and pickaxe. I'm not too sure how big a role supplies play in the Shattered Aeons, so uh, we will have to keep uh, that in mind going forward. After Shattered Aeons, we uh, had a few changes to our summary. We do have uh, nine tally marks under Yig's Fury, which is important because uh, in Shattered Aeons, if you have uh, ten uh, tally marks under Yig's Fury, you start the game with uh, one vengeance point in the victory display. We uh, will not have to worry about that, fortunately. Unfortunately, during the Depths of Yoth, uh, Ursula did fall into the Depths, although she uh, didn't fall very far since she was already uh, pretty close to the bottom. However, I did suffer one physical trauma because I was defeated at the end of that scenario. So I will be beginning the uh, Shattered Aeons with two physical and two mental trauma. I did have to add a minus four token to the Chaos Bag, so it uh, shifts a little bit more negative heading into this final scenario. And uh, the braziers remain unlit, which means I start the... Uh, the Shattered Aeon scenario with two fewer cards in my uh, draw deck. As you may remember, a lot of the uh, scenarios in this uh, campaign either affect the number of uh, resources you begin with or number of cards in your hand. So we are starting with two fewer cards, so we will only have three to, uh, to uh, begin the game with. Fortunately, we do start the game with uh, higher education. So we will probably need to uh, draw some cards uh, ASAP to uh, get that back online. We are set up and uh, ready to go here in Octagon. We have uh, Ursula Downs here with her two physical and two mental trauma. She does have higher education and uh, charisma in play. Ursula begins the game at the Nexus of Nakai, unraveling the threads. It is a location with the Ancient and Ruins traits, and it has the uh, flavor text. At the center of the chamber lies the Nexus, a bottomless pit in the earth, ringed by futuristic machinery, no doubt by, built by those who came before humanity. Inside this pit is a swirling soup of eldritch energy, glowing strands of ethereal light that ripple, fold, and weave among one another. As you approach, a fragment of stone chips from the brim and falls into the portal, vanishing from existence. And it is connected to uh, two locations, 
one being the swiggly teardrop, teardrop, I guess, and the other being the star. We are uh, playing uh, Shattered Aeons. The uh, Agenda 1A is Threads of Time. As you enter the Grand Chamber beyond the doorway, the Nexus stirs, the earth quakes below you, and the walls chips and crumbles. Shards of stone float in midair above the Nexus. You are running out of time. Reality is starting to shatter all around you. And it has the forced effect, if an investigator with the Relic of Ages in, in his or her hand, deck, or discard pile, or play area is eliminated, immediately advance to Agenda 3B. We do not have the Relic. Uh, that was stolen from us by uh, Ichitaka at the beginning of the Depths of Yoth when she betrayed us. So I'm not too sure how we will be, uh, if that will be uh, advancing to Agenda 3B will be an issue at all. And uh, this does have a Doom Threshold of 6. Agenda, or sorry, Act 1A is Worlds Beyond. The energies of the Nexus swirl in the ground below you, beckoning you to enter. Whether it is a thing of science or magic, you do not know. It is a gateway of sorts, that much you can tell. But a gateway to where? And it has the forced effect, when an enemy would spawn at an empty location and there are no empty locations in play, reveal cards from the exploration deck until a location is revealed, put that location into play and spawn that enemy there. Shuffle the exploration deck. So, we uh, have to pay attention to that. Uh, the exploration deck only contains, uh, I believe, three locations at the start of the game, although we have uh, six more set aside, and uh, hopefully at some point we will be shuffling those into the exploration deck. There are some uh, fairly nasty enemies in this scenario from what I've seen, uh, just scanning my player cards, so uh, we'll have to watch out for that. And we will need uh, two clues per investigator in order to advance. We are playing Shattered Aeons on standard difficulty. The skulls, of which there are two, are minus two, minus four instead if the Relic of Ages is at your location. Uh, that won't be a problem at the beginning. The cultists, of which there are two, are minus two, and if you do not succeed by at least one, place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy. I don't believe we have any tablets, and the uh, Elder thing is a minus two. If you fail, shuffle the topmost hex treachery in the encounter discard pile into the exploration deck. That uh, That's not great either. I don't really want to uh, pack the uh, exploration deck with any more treacheries than it uh, has already. I know there is a uh, an Ancient Evils in there, among uh, other things. We have set aside uh, two enemies. One is uh, Ichitaka Skyon of Yig. She is a she has four fight, six health per investigator, and four evade. She's got the humanoid monster serpent and elite traits. She's got hunter and retaliate. You may take an action to parlay with her. Test five uh, intellect to plead for your life. If a uh, cultist symbol is revealed during this test, you automatically succeed. And if you fail, Ichitaka attacks you. If you succeed, flip this card over and uh, resolve its text. She's worth two victory points, and she will hit you for two damage and one horror. There is uh, also Alejandro Vela, or is he? He's uh, got six fight, four health per investigator, three of eight, humanoid cultist elite. He has el uh, alert and hunter, and uh, you may take an action to parlay with him to test five intellect to plead for your life. If a uh, tablet symbol is revealed during this test, you automatically succeed. And if you fail, Alejandro Vela attacks you. If you uh, succeed, flip this card over and resolve its text. He's worth two victory points, and he will hit you for a damage and two horror. So he is the, the reverse of Ichitaka. We also have that, uh, we did add that minus four token to the bag at the beginning of the scenario. I think we're uh, ready to start here. We will uh, draw our three cards and uh, see how we do. Let's see if I can use my 
use uh, I'm using a different system uh, than I usually do to play this so let's see if we can't uh, uh, draw some cards there we go all right so we only get three we do get a we do get to Mulligan though which is uh, awfully nice uh, some of the scenarios don't let you do the wow do three <laughs> three uh, weaknesses that is a uh, not a good start so we will be uh, obviously getting rid of those I don't think this deck was shuffled let's shuffle it up here I thought I shuffled it before we started but uh, the fact that we drew all of our weaknesses at the beginning suggests we did not all right let's try this again draw our three cards all right we've got an I've got a plan a logical reasoning and a field work um hmm uh, we don't have any clues so I've got a plan is not going to be very helpful uh, we don't have any clues so we can't play logical reasoning right away although it does heal two horror so and we do have two mental trauma so that may be worth keeping field work uh, is of course after you move to a location and it has one clue uh, we have to uh, we get plus two skill value. I'm going to pitch that as well, and we'll draw two cards. We get a deduction and another deduction. So there we go. We have uh, lots of deduction, but uh, not much in the way of uh, of assets. I do need to flip over uh, the nexus. The nexus is a four shroud location with uh, one clue. And it has uh, the Ancient and Ruins traits. It has the Forced Effect. After you move from Nexus of Nakai to an other world location or vice versa, take one horror for each clue on that other world location. Ouch, that's, uh, that's going to hurt. Uh, and it has the action Explore. Draw the top card of the Exploration deck. If it is a connecting location, put it into play and move to it. Do not take horror from the above forced ability when moving via this effect. Okay, so that's not that's not too bad. Uh, as long as we're not having to move back to the Nexus all that often, uh, we won't be taking uh, that horror. So if we move from the Nexus to somewhere, we're okay as long as we're exploring. But if we're just moving around, we will be taking a bunch of horror. That's uh, That's rough. All right, well, I think we get our uh, our three actions here. And we need to pass a four intellect. Our intellect is four, so that's going to be pretty tough to pick up that clue right away. Uh, let's see. We do have two deductions, but we also would like to bring our higher education online since it is our main source of... Uh, willpower and intellect icon so I'm going to use an action to draw a card we get our hyper awareness and I'm going to take another action to draw a card that will oh there is our weakness that is overzealous so we are drawing two encounter cards before we do anything this game let's see what our first one is we get a mysterious chanting, place two doom on the nearest cultist enemy if there are no cultist enemies in play. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Shuffle the encounter deck. All right, so we have to search the encounter deck for a cultist. Uh, we can... No, we didn't shuffle the deck. All right, so we have to do that first of all. What's that card? Words of Power. All right, so that one's uh, uh, that one is not visible. So we need to replace this and shuffle this deck up. All right, let's try this again. We get there's an Ancient Evils. Okay, so we are adding a Doom to the. Uh, to the uh, agenda and we will also have to draw another card since ancient evils gets a surge and it is going to be a tear in time test three willpower 
And for each point you fail by, you must either lose one action or take one horror. Uh, we have uh, only one action remaining. It's three. We are three. So we are going to spend, I think we'll spend a resource to uh, power up our higher education since we do. Oh, we don't have five cards in hand. Well, we can't do that, can we? So that is, uh, yeah, that uh, drawing that overzealous prevented us from getting our five cards in hand, so we can't do that. So we are just going to be going 3-3. Three, three. That is uh, pretty bad. Let's see uh, what we get for our, uh, what the chaos bag has to say. It says Elder Thing. Elder Thing is minus two, and if you fail, shuffle the topmost hex treachery in the encounter discard pile into the exploration deck. Do we have a hex treachery? No, we just have an omen treachery. And uh, a Terran time is a hex. But uh, I don't think it's in the discard pile yet, so I don't think we have to shuffle that in. So we will uh, get rid of that. All right, well, that was a uh, pretty lousy start to our uh, turn here. We need. We have one action left. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep drawing cards here because I do want to bring, get up to five. There is an unexpected courage that will be uh, very helpful. So we are at the end of our turn. We will draw a card. There is another weakness. That's out of the body experience. So we shuffle each card from your hand into your deck and draw an equal number of cards. Shuffle out of the body experience into your deck. So we uh, shuffle all five cards back into our hand. So we will shuffle those up. Uh, shuffle each card from your hand into your deck and draw an equal number of cards. Okay, so we've done that. Let's draw five more cards. We have drawn an I've Got a Plan, a Manual Dexterity, a Logical Reasoning, Jake Williams, and an Unearth the Ancients. Uh, that's uh, fine by me. We shuffle out of the body experience back into our deck. We will gain a resource. And we go on to our first uh, Mythos phase. We add a Doom and we draw an Encounter card, which is going to be another Tear in Time. This time we do have five cards in our deck, so we can spend a resource in order to uh, boost our uh, willpower by two with uh, higher education. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we do pass that uh, skill test. Okay, it is our turn again. We are. Uh, we do need to grab this clue and get a move on here. We have uh, an unearth the ancients, which could certainly help us. Uh, I am going to pitch that to the skill test, I think, and I will commit. Actually, I'm going to do this in a different order. I am going to spend uh, one resource to boost our uh, intellect by two with higher education. And then I'm going to commit this to the uh, skill test. So we are four, five, six, seven, eight versus four. Chaos bag says minus three. So I'm uh, glad we did that. Otherwise, we would be uh, definitely uh, failing that. We do grab this clue. OK. We are down a card again. We can do some exploring. Or we could get one of our allies out. I think I'm going to play this a little bit slower than I would normally do. So I'm going to spend three resources to bring out Jake Williams. Jake has the, uh, he's got three health and two sanity. And uh, the first move or investigate action you perform each turn does not provoke attacks of opportunity. And after you reveal a location or put a location into play, we can exhaust Jake to draw one card. Okay, we've got one action left. 
So we could try to explore and uh, move to another location. And if we do that, we get to draw a card with Jake. Let's try that. We will go to the Explore deck here, shuffle that up, and we reveal a card. It is Yugoth. We do get to move there. It is a fair game because it has that swirly teardrop symbol. So we will move there. Uh, we do get to uh, uh, exhaust uh, Jake to draw a card. There is a magnifying glass. And Ursula does have her uh, does have her, her uh, response that she can use after you move to a location, take an investigate action. We'll probably be doing that. Yugoth is a two shroud location with three clues. It has an action, flip a clue on Yugoth to its doom side to draw a card and it is connected to the diamond. Uh, we will use uh, Ursula's uh, response. I am actually going to, oh, do I want to play that or not? It's four, two, no, I'm not. We will just, uh, we'll go straight up. Chaos Bag gives us another elder thing. That's a minus two, and if we fail, we shuffle the topmost hex treachery into the uh, on the encounter discard pile into the exploration deck. We did succeed, so we don't have to do that. We do get a clue. Now, we can advance the act deck if we want. I think we will do that uh, while it is our turn. So I am gonna spend those two clues and we are gonna flip over the act all right the act deck uh, gives us return to another time each time you step through the nexus you get one step closer to your ultimate destination a place that exists outside the boundaries of time and space and it says shuffle the set aside pocket in time location into the exploration deck so we have to go find the pocket of time uh, location No, nope, it's not in that deck. I believe it's in this one here. Pocket of time. There's the pocket of time. So it's going into the exploration deck. I'll shuffle that up. Okay. So we advance to Act uh, 2A. Search for the Brotherhood. Somewhere deep within this nexus of worlds lies your objective, a place where timelines converge. You can see it in the flashes of insight from beyond this reality, windows into other timelines, a place carved out of time and space where the Brotherhood no doubt resides. And it has the objective, if an investigator enters a pocket in time, advance. So we uh, obviously have a pretty clear goal now to find the pocket in time. Six cards, though, that's a pretty hefty uh, investigation, uh, exploration we have to do to find it. Plus, we've got the forced effect on the uh, nexus of Nakai. So we're going to take a, for each clue on that other world location, we're going to take a horror if we move. So we're probably going to want to, uh, we did discover one clue. I need to put two more. Whoops. I need to put two more uh, clues on this location. So if we move back from Yugoth now, we will take two horror. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that. We can discover the clues there and uh, get moving. All right, so we will uh, ready during the upkeep phase, Jake Williams readies. We will draw a card. There is another logical reasoning that uh, that will come in handy because we uh, do have the two, two mental trauma we took. Um, I spent these two clues. I took the clues off Yugoth instead. All right, uh, so we will want to uh, try to play the logical reasoning at some point, and we will gain a resource. Okay, well, we're going on to the next Mythos phase. We add a, a, a Doom token to our agenda, and we will draw an encounter card. 
which is not drawing for some reason. There we go. Okay, our encounter card is Shattered Ages. It is a Hex Revelation test for willpower. If you fail, place one clue from the token pool on each location other than the Nexus of Nakai. Okay, so that uh, that will boost, if we fail this, that will boost the number of clues on Yugoth by one, uh, potentially slowing us down because we'll, we will want to try to get all the clues off it. Uh, we are... We do have five cards in our in our hand, so we can use uh, higher education. Uh, what it's a four though? Wow, uh, we are a three. So if we use higher education twice, uh, that will put us at uh, seven. Seven versus four. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say about this. Chaos Bag gives us another Elder Thing token, so that's minus two. We do succeed, fortunately, so we do not have to uh, add a clue. It is our turn. We will get our three actions. Uh, first action, we are going to investigate. We'll just go four versus two. Uh, Chaos Bag says... There's another Elder Thing. Is that the only token in the bag? Nope, there are 16 tokens and we just keep drawing the Elder Thing. <laughs> so that's a, uh, we're two versus two, so we do gain a clue. We'll take another action. Investigate Ugoth. We get a minus two this time. We do pass, so we have grabbed the two clues. We do have one action remaining. Uh, so after we move from the Nexus to an Otherworld location or vice versa, take one horror for each clue on that Otherworld location. So we can move back to the Nexus now without taking any horror as our final action. Uh, Jake does not uh, trigger, so we do not get any bonus there. We will draw a card during the upkeep phase. There is our weakness, uh, drawing the sign. Boy, three, is that the third weakness so far this game? Putting drawing the sign into play in your threat area, your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking hand size during the upkeep. All right, so we did draw, we did uh, put drawing the sign into our threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking your maximum hand size during the upkeep phase. So we are going to lose, uh, we dropped down to three cards because of that. Uh, we do. We are at eight, so we will have to lose two. We will lose the manual dexterity as well as the uh, the uh, I've got a plan. That was bad timing. All right. Well, we do gain a resource, and we will add a doom. Four of six. We will draw an encounter card. It is lost in time. Shuffle a non-story asset you control into your deck, uh, moving all damage and horror from that asset to your investigator. If no asset is shuffled into your deck by this effect, choose and discard three cards from your hand. So uh, bye-bye, Jake. Jake gets shuffled back into our deck, unfortunately. Fortunately, he did not have any uh, damage or horror on him, so we don't have to, uh, to take that. We do have uh, three actions. We are going to have to use two of them, though, to get rid of our signature or this weakness. And then we have one left, which we might as well use to explore. Or we can use it to draw a card. I'm going to use it to draw a card. There's another Unearthly Ancients. So we will go to the upkeep phase. We will draw a card. There's a Pathfinder. We will gain a resource. And we will add another Doom, just like that. We're at 506. Encounter card is racked by time. This is one of the ones from the Shattered Aeons. It is a Hex test three willpower. Each investigator at a Shattered location must also perform this skill test. Each investigator who fails takes two damage. Each asset assigned damage by this effect that is not defeated is shuffled into its owner's deck. Yikes. So if we had assigned... Uh, any damage to uh, to Jake if he was still around he would disappear 
We're a 3-3. Three, three. We do have five cards in our hand, though, so we can go 5-3. Just want to check what our... They're all minus two. So actually, we're not too bad on the Chaos Bag, I think. So we'll just go with... Uh, we'll go five versus three. Chaos Bag says minus three, of course. So uh, we do miss by one. We are not at a shattered location, so that doesn't matter. Uh, we do take two damage, though, just like that. There we go. Four damage out of seven, just like that. We are in some trouble in the damage department. We do get three uh, actions. We need to get moving here because uh, we're not going to be around for long if we uh, keep uh, taking damage like that. We will explore. So we will draw the top card of the, encount of the exploration deck. Let's shuffle that up. First card is another racked by time. Look at that. Wow. Okay, well, that was... Uh, so we have to do that again. I'm going to spend another resource because we really don't have an option. Uh, do we take... Yeah, we have to... I'm going to commit this logical reasoning as well. So we are going to go uh, 3, 5, 7 versus uh, 3 because we cannot afford to take more damage. Chaos Bag says zero, so we do pass that. Ouch. Those are rough. We uh, will take another action to explore. There's an Ancient Evils. That will advance the agenda deck. Uh, so just like that, we are uh, flipping. That's okay, though. We were going to advance it anyway next turn. So we will flip this one over. All right, Agenda 1B, the spawn of Nakai. You are not the first to intrude in this abyssal pit. You were warned not to break the seal, and yet here you are. Now you face the consequences for your foolish transgression. The thing emerges from the lightless void beyond the nexus. It is a being of black polymorphic ichor, and animated viscous ooze that crawls along the ground with shapeless limbs and leaves a trail of smooth, dissolved stone in its wake. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. We shall do that. Spawn the set-aside formless spawn in the nexus of Nakai. All right, got to go find the formless spawn. He is here. Now he does not, yeah, he does not appear anywhere uh, special. So he just appears at the nexus. Is he, he is a monster. Formless Spawn has two fight, 10 health and two evade, monster, abomination and elite. Spawns at the nexus of Nakai. He's massive. Formless Spawn cannot move or be moved. Formless Spawn gets plus one fight and plus one evade for each doom on each card in Nexus of Nakai, including the Nexus of Nakai. He hits uh, for three damage and three horror, and he's worth two victory points. So uh, the Formless Spawn is hanging out with us. That is bad news. Then we have to add this card to the victory display as a Vengeance 1 card. All right, and then we advance to Agenda 2A. Agenda 2A is pendulous threads. Inside the nexus, the interwoven threads of ethereal light begin to unravel, and reality re unravels with it. Forced to fact, if an investigator with the Relic of Ages in his or her hand deck, discard pile, or play area is eliminated, immediately advance to Agenda 3B. Not a concern. We have uh, seven. It has a doom threshold of seven. Wow, that was our second action, and we still have the formless spawn here to deal with. We are going to have to evade the formless spawn, or we are going to die this round. Yeah, we're going to die. Okay, so four versus two. Is that going to be enough? 
Probably not. Uh, I am going to pitch the Pathfinder to the skill test. We will go five versus two. Let's see what the Chaos Bag says. This could be it. Chaos Bag gives us a minus five. And just like that, we are finished. We take three damage and three horror, and we die. Wow, that was uh, quick. How was that, turn five? Wow, that is uh, brutal. Well, I thought uh, Ursula did have some evasion on her side there, but uh, not when you draw the minus five. Seems fitting that minus five has been a thorn in our side through the entire campaign. And so uh, here it, uh, it takes us down. That was a very quick game. Let's see where we are here. That's uh, 36 minutes all told, and that, that was with my lengthy introduction. So I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to reset the game, and we're going to give this try. We'll give this another try. That was, that was a pretty short game. We'll try again and uh, see uh, how things go. All right, I am back. Let's see if we uh, cannot uh, get a better game out of this one. Uh, that was uh, pretty nasty. Double racked by time following a hit from the, uh, the formless spawn, and uh, that was game. So, uh, yeah, rough, uh, rough start to, for Ursula there. I think we need to try to move a little quicker. Uh, we've got six, uh, s uh, the Doom Threshold of six, so we need to really uh, get a move on here and try to get the Pocket of Time out, I think, before that happens. But uh, I'm not entirely sure if that is possible. So let's, uh, let's give this another try. We will draw our three cards, since we do start with uh, minus two cards in our hand. There's an Inquiring Mind. And I've got a plan and a field work. I am going to pitch all of those. Uh, none of those cards are particularly helpful at this moment. We get a Pathfinder, Dr. Mylan Christopher, and Jake Williams. So we do get two, uh, two allies uh, right off the bat. That will, uh, that will be awfully nice. Uh, certainly Dr. Mylan will help us uh, because we uh, will not be able to use our higher education right away. So we will start off with our three uh, with our three actions. I am going to use my first action to play Dr. Mylan Christopher. So he will come out. He gives us a plus one intellect, and uh, yeah, of course, after you uh, successfully investigate, you gain one resource. That is our first action. Our second action, we need to uh, investigate this location. Let's, uh, so we're going, for, we're four versus four, but we are five versus four due to Dr. Mylan. So we'll simply draw in and draw and uh, see what the chaos bag has to say. It gives us a minus four, so that is a failure. Let's do it again. We get a zero, so that is a success and we gain one resource from Dr. Mylan Christopher. There we go. Okay, that was our three actions. We will draw a card during the upkeep phase. <laughs> For the second game in the row, we draw overzealous right off the bat. So we're gonna get two encounter cards right here. First encounter card is the Temporal Devourer. Ooh, nice. He's a uh, four fight, five health, four evade. Yikes! Uh, monster extra dimensional uh, spawns farthest shattered or extra dimensional location. If there are no such locations in play, temporal devourer gains surge. He is a hunter uh, forced after temporal devourer enters a shattered or extra dimensional location. Place one clue on that location from the token pool and he will hit you for a damage and a sanity. Now this, when an enemy would spawn at an empty location and there are no empty locations in play, how do these two interact?
Okay, so the uh, the Temporal Devourer doesn't spawn. He does gain Surge, though. So... That's okay, because he was going to Surge anyway, so he simply gets uh, discarded. And then we draw another card, which is going to be an Acolyte. Okay, now here's the guy who will... This is effective here. When he would spawn at an empty location and there are no empty locations in play, we reveal cards from the exploration deck until a location is revealed. Put that location into play and spawn that enemy there. Okay, so we have to go do that. Let us uh, hide our... We'll do that. We will shuffle up our exploration deck. It is the exploration deck we are dealing with here. It is. We end up at the shores of Rely, or at least this uh, Acolyte does. Bring him to the front. That will satisfy our overzealous. He does enter plate with a doom. And Shores of Rely has two clues on it. Let's see what it does. Shores of Rely gets plus one shroud for each doom on each card in Shores of Rely, uh, including itself. So I would imagine it has two shroud due to the presence of the Acolyte. After Shores of Rely enters play, place one doom on it. Okay, so we get another doom. All right, so we're up to three doom on the first, after the first turn. That's pretty bad. Uh, so it will be a three shroud location and it has two clues. Yikes. Okay, but it's out of the encounter, it's out of the exploration deck. So if we can find Yugoth maybe, then we can, uh, we can get the two clues we need to flip. Uh, we're really not in a position to kill the Acolyte at the moment uh, with our one combat. That's not going to really work. Um, yeah, so that was our that was that normally that would be on the uh, the Mythos phase, but uh, that was still our own draw phase. So we will gain a, a, a resource. We will add a Doom. We are three of six, and we haven't even done anything yet. Let's uh, draw an encounter card. It is a Terran time. Test three willpower. For each point you fail by, you must either lose one action or take one horror. So that is going to be 3-3. Three, three. We uh, cannot use our higher education, so we're just going to have to rely on the good graces of the Chaos Bag for this one. Chaos Bag says minus five, so that will be a big failure. So we are going to either take three horror or lose three actions. Well, that's not a good choice either way, is it? Um, hmm. Well, we can take one horror on Dr. Mylan Christopher. And then we can take a horror, and then we can lose an action. So we'll only have two this turn. So able to mitigate that somewhat, but it's still pretty nasty. Okay, we have two actions remaining. We can go exploring. I think that will be our first action. So we will shuffle up the exploration deck. And we will draw, there is the City of the Unseen. Okay. So we move there. City of the Unseen is a four shroud location with one clue forced after one or more doom is placed on a cultist enemy at the City of the Unseen. Place one additional doom on that enemy. Okay, so it just has a clue though. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, we're a five versus four. We don't really have anything we can commit to that. Uh, I'd kind of like to save my Jake. So we'll use, uh, try to get him into play because we're already, uh, 
we're already at uh, we're taking a lot of damage and horror it seems in this one and that uh, formless spawn is going to be out here toot sweet so uh, let's go five versus four for our response chaos bag says minus two so that is a failure let's uh, try it again uh, five versus four chaos bag gives us a plus one that time. So that uh, actually helps us out We gain a resource from dr. Mylan Christopher and that clue which means we can advance our uh, our act since it's our turn We will flip that over of course it is the return to another time so we shuffle a pocket of time location into the exploration deck we will go find it it's in here uh, where is it let's grab that drop it here I'm gonna grab the formless spawn while we're at it since we know he's coming shortly So we still have three, is it three uh, treacheries in the exploration deck? Not great. One of them is a uh, ancient evil, so we know we're going to be uh, drawing. We're going to be flipping this location a lot sooner. Let's uh, advance to Act 2A. It has the objective, if an investigator enters a pocket of time, we advance. That was our turn. So we will draw a card. There's a manual dexterity. That'll be helpful once we have to deal with the spawn. We will gain a resource. We will add a doom. We are at two, three, four out of six. We draw an encounter card. We are now we're at five. Five out of six. Wow. Okay, so uh, Ancient Evils bumps us up to five out of six, but it is our turn again. All right, let's. Uh, we need to move back. The forced effect on the Nexus doesn't trigger because there's no clues on that other world location, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's. Uh, we're going to do some more exploring, I think, as our second action. So we'll shuffle up that for good measure. And our first encounter. Oh, look at that. We got super lucky. We shuffled up the exploration deck and we did get the pocket of time. So we will move there. The pocket of time is a five shroud location with one clue per investigator. It has the extra dimensional trait forced after you move from a pocket of time to a shattered location or vice versa. Take one damage for each clue on that to shattered location. And it has the uh, game text action explore draw the top card of the exploration deck if it is a connecting location put it into play and move to it do not take damage from the above forced ability when moving via this effect it's worth a victory point and it is connected to two locations okay but we do also advance if an investigator enters a pocket of time advance so we do get to flip that over all right, Act 2B is gateways to other times. What you see before you is truly staggering. Throughout these halls are hundreds of windows into places both ancient and futuristic, once grand civilizations that came before even the earliest records of known history and more still have yet to be realized. The psychological weight of this discovery is almost more than your mind can bear. Humans are not the masters or caretakers of the earth. They are merely a footnote in a much longer history, a history which is about to be revised. So we shuffle each set-aside shattered location into the exploration deck. Each investigator shuffles the topmost hex treachery in the encounter discard pile into the exploration deck. Okay, so let us go. So we look at all cards here. We've got, there's a shattered, of course, this is the greatest card in this entire pack, Plateau of Lang. Kudos to uh, designer Matt Newman for including that one. It makes me very happy to see that, of course, being the man from Lang. Uh, Nakotis is shattered. Uh, Valusia, 
Atlantis and Mu. Okay, lots of uh, classic locale oh, and the ruins of New York. Lots of classic Lovecraft lo Lovecraftian locations. So we will shuffle all of those into the in the uh, uh, the exploration deck. We also have to go find the topmost hex, which is a Terran time. So that also gets shuffled in there. Okay. Uh, check the campaign log. If the relic is missing, attach the set aside Relic of Ages, unleash the time stream to a pocket of time under no investigator's control, advance to Act 3A, the Yithian relic. If investigators found the missing relic, advance to Act 3A, the Yithian relic. Okay, so we're, uh, we have to go find the, uh, the relic. I believe it is in here. Unleash the time stream. And then we advance to Act 3A. Is that it? The Yithian Relic. Okay, the Yithian Relic. Act 3A. If you intend to amend the or if you intend to mend the shattered timelines, you will need to find the Relic of Ages and learn to harness it, harness its power. Search your, it has two actions. Search your deck or discard pile for the Relic of Ages and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck or action. If the Relic of Ages is attached to your location and there are no clues on that location, take control of the Relic of Ages. Objective, if an investigator controls the Relic of Ages, advance. All right, so we need the Relic of Ages. Fortunately, it is attached to this location, so if there are no clues there, we can take an action to do it. Uh, we do need, let's see, we moved back, we explored, we got very lucky, so we do have uh, Ursula's response still. So we are a five versus five. Not great odds, not great odds, but we can give it a shot. Let's see how we do. Chaos Bag says auto fail, so I'm glad I didn't commit anything to that. Uh, we wouldn't have succeeded anyway. We have one action remaining. Uh, I am going to... We are going to need some higher education action here to help us get that. So I am going to take an action to draw a card. There's a magnifying glass. That'll help. Okay. We are no longer at the nexus of Nakai, which I think will save us because we are going to advance the doom here. Are we going to advance the agenda deck and that formless spawn is going to come out? Okay. We will draw a card. There's an emergency cache. We'll gain a resource. We do have five cards in hand now, so we can use higher education. We will go advance uh, at a doom, so we are at four, five, six. So we'll, we will remove all doom from play and uh, flip over our agenda deck to the spawn of Nakai. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Uh, we only had two cards in there, so that is done. And then we will spawn the formless spawn in the nexus and add this to the victory display as a vengeance point. Advance to pendulous threads. So if an investigator with the relic is eliminated, immediately advance to agenda 3b. We don't have the relic yet, but I'm hoping to get it this turn. Okay, the formless spawn spawns at the nexus of Nakai, cannot be moved or... So he basically just sits there. Okay, so we don't have to really worry about him because we got out of there quickly enough. Okay, that's good. We still have to draw an encounter card this turn. So let's do that now. We get a Creeping Darkness. Ouch. Uh, this is one of the new uh, 
cards from the uh, Shattered Aeons Encounter set. Attach, Nex attach two Nexus of Nakai, place one Doom on Creeping Darkness. So the Nexus is a busy place. Uh, formless Spawn gets plus one health. Well, we weren't going to kill a 10 health enemy anyway, so it doesn't matter if he's got 11. And it says, double action test three willpower or check your supplies. If you have a torch, if you have torches, discard Creeping Shadows. We have no torches, so Creeping Shadows stays there. I really hope we don't have to go back through the Nexus at some point because that uh, will be in a an incredibly nasty place to go through. Uh, granted, we weren't going to kill the Formless Spawn anyway, so uh, what can we do? All right, well, we get to our three actions. We are now in a position to uh, to use our higher education, so I am going to spend two resources uh, to bump ourselves from five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, nine versus five, is that going to be enough? No, we're going to go two more. Uh, we're going to go 11 versus five for our first action. Chaos bag, we'll say minus three. We are successful. So we grab that clue. We gain a resource from Dr. Mylan Christopher. Now, we may take the action on Act 3A uh, to take control of the Relic. So we will do that as our next action. So we gain the Relic. The Relic is Unleash the Time Stream. It has the forced effect after you resolve a treachery while exploring. Shuffle that treachery back into the exploration deck instead of discarding it. Don't like the sound of that at all but we uh, have taken control of the relic, so we do advance. Okay. The relic is the key, Act 3B. In your hands, you hold the key to fixing all of this. It hums and vibrates with immense power, power that seems to grow and flourish as you visit other timelines. For the remainder of the scenario, if the Relic of Ages leaves play for any reason, shuffle each location attached to it into the exploration deck and reset the act deck to 3A. The relic leaves play for any reason, shuffling and reset the act deck to 3A. Check the campaign log. Oh, crap. Uh, if Ichtaka is set against you, the thing was once, the thing that was once your companion slithers out of the darkness hissing. Yig will have his way. Valusia will be returned to us. Spawn the set aside Ichtaka Skyan of Yig in the Nexus of Nakai. Oh, I thought she was coming to the pocket of time. That would have been terrible. But she is a hunter, right? Yeah, she is a hunter. Uh, let's bring her to the front. So she is a hunter, so she will be moving, and it, it can get to us, I presume. Yes, she can. So she is going to be attacking us this turn, unless we get out of the pocket of time. Uh, if Alejandro is set against you, fools, are you blind? Alejandro motions to the worlds before him. Your kind stands no chance against the ravages of time. Spawn the set aside Alejandro, or is he in a pocket of time? Oh, great. Okay, so we just spawned two enemies. Okay, so he shows up in the pocket of time and engages us and we will advance to act 4a mend the shatter each window you step through seems to empower the relic once the artifact is fully powered you can use it to mend the shattered timelines and prevent catastrophe action if you are are at a shattered location with no clues test Willpower or Intellect 3, if you succeed, attach your location face down to the Relic of Ages. Each investigator and enemy at that location is moved to a pocket of time. Objective, if the number of locations attached to the Relic of Ages is equal to 1 plus the number of investigators who started the game, advance. So we need two 
uh, locations attached to the relic of ages in order to advance however we also have to deal with these uh, with these bad boys uh, we are going to be taking three damage and three horror if we do not uh, deal with these uh, with these two And if we are eliminated, we immediately advance to Agenda 3B. Okay, well, um, hmm. We can evade Alejandro or we can parlay with him. He is alert, which would kill us. If we fail that parlay test, he would immediately uh, attack us and we would die the following enemy phase. However, flip this card over and resolve its text. Well, I'm game. I can't kill these guys, so uh, I'm going to be chased by them, and they have four and three evade respectively, so I might as well try to see what we can do here. Okay, well, we're going to, we are going to, uh, make this parlay test as our final action uh, it is a five we are a five but we have uh, our higher education so we can go six seven eight nine that takes ten eleven we'll spend three resources for plus six so we will go eleven versus five chaos bag says there's a skull that is a minus four because the relic of ages is at our location but we do succeed so we get to flip over alejandro and see what happens alejandro has another way alejandro if it is really him beneath that guise of humanity contemplates your words very well we will spare you but only if you assist the brotherhood he motions to the gateways all around you. Your kind was not the first to inherit the earth. You know this now from your travels. We tried to get you to understand, but in your stubbornness you would not listen. Hear me now. The creatures that drove us to ruin will return. They will wipe humanity off this planet, and the only evidence of your existence will live on in Nakotus. But together we can stop them. Join us, and you may yet save the Earth and yourselves. The investigators must decide. Choose one. I could never turn my back on humanity. Flip this card back over, exhausted and unengaged. For the remainder of the scenario, you cannot parlay with uh, Alejandro Vela. So flipping him over, exhausted, will spare us a turn, but then he will uh, go on the attack again. Or I accept... Remove this card and act for a Mend the Shatter from the game and advance to the Set Aside act for a Time Lock. For the remainder of the scenario, you cannot parlay with a Chitaka and cultist enemies do not engage or attack you. Well, I accept. I accept your offer, Alejandro. We will uh, we'll do this together. Yeah, Alejandro was also a hunter, so uh, I was going to be chased relentlessly by two enemies uh, that was not going to work out well in our favor so i am going to accept his offer so i am going to remove this card and act for a mend the shatter from the game let where do we put this thing let's look at these cards here there's a lot of moving around uh, so this goes away this comes out and Alejandro goes away. Time lock. Act 4A. Each window you step through seems to empower the relic. Once the artifact is fully powered, you will use it to prevent the destruction of Nakotas and the Yithians. Action. If you are at a shattered location, you may, with no clues, test 3 willpower or 3 intellect. If you succeed, attach your location face down to the relic. Each investigator and enemy at that location is moved to a pocket of time. If Nakotis is attached to the Relic of Ages, advance. Uh, 
so that's not much of a bargain. So we're going to have to really get lucky and find Nakotas is uh, what we're saying here. Well, this is a bloody tough scenario. Holy cow. Um, all right, so Ichitaka comes after us during the enemy phase. Actually, does she? Yes, she does, because we are at the pocket. We will take two damage and a horror. And we cannot parley with her anymore, so we've cut that off. So we are going to have to just try to evade her. Then we're going to have to explore. Hope we get incredibly lucky and draw Nakotas as one of the two locations we need in order to... Uh, to uh, advance this. Uh, oh, no, do we need two? No, we only need Nakotas. Okay, so we just need Nakotas. All right. Uh, let's draw a card. There is an I've got a plan. Uh, six health per investigator. We're not killing. Uh, I don't think we're killing uh, Ichitaka anytime soon. Maybe. I mean, we could hit her for, what, four? Yeah, and then uh, we're stuck. So no help there. Let us add a Doom. And we will draw an Encounter card. It is a mysterious chanting. Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search the Encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Shuffle your enc the encounter deck. So we do get to draw a cultist enemy, uh, but they do not engage with us or attack us. Uh, we'll just take this guy. Uh, he can hang out here. We will take an acolyte. Uh, he will gain a doom. So we're at two of seven. Uh, there are no called, or no, we are at three because of the uh, creeping darkness. Okay, so just want to uh, look at this one again for a second. Just want to look at Alejandro for a moment. Uh, Cultist enemies do not engage or attack you. Okay, so we have uh, dealt with the cult. However, we have Ichitaka to deal with, and we have a bunch of... Uh, we need to find Nakotas, which is uh, not going to be very easy with 11 cards in the exploration deck. Very well, our first action, we are going to have to evade Ichitaka. We are a four versus four. We can go six versus four. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we do evade her. That, whoops. Uh, so she is evaded for the time being. We'll just keep her up here. Uh, so that is gone. We get to draw a card. Oh, there's our weakness drawing the sign. Put drawing the sign into play in your threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking your hand size during the upkeep. So we will have to somehow get rid of that or we are going to lose a lot of cards. And uh, we are going to lose our higher education bonuses. However, we do get to explore twice, and uh, I think that takes a priority. We will shuffle up that uh, exploration deck one more time, and we will take our first action to explore. It is the Plateau of Lang. Of course, that's where I'm going. So we move over to the Plateau of Lang. It has not a resource. It should have a clue. Plateau of Leng is a three shroud location with one clue. Forced, if you reveal a Elder Thing symbol during a skill test at Plateau, at Plateau of Leng, take one horror. Okay. Does it do us any good to grab the clue here? 
I don't think so. It doesn't help us at all because we don't need the plateau. We need... Uh, So I'm going to move back to the pocket of time. During our upkeep phase, Ichitaka will ready and engage us. We will draw a card. Then we have to drop down to our hand size is three. Uh, let's get rid of that, that, and Dr. Mylan. We will gain a resource. At a doom, we are at two, three, four of seven. Our encounter card is another acolyte. He can go, we're starting to run out of uh, empty locations here, but he can go here. And he does gain a doom. So we have, we're now two, three, four, five, we're going to be six of seven next turn. We get our three actions. One of them is going to have to be to try to evade Ichitaka, which is not going to be easy. Fortunately, she is not alert, or that would be uh, really bad news. Uh, we've got Jake and the Pathfinder. That would give us... Uh, we could get two agility icons out of it, so we'd be going six versus four. Six versus four on the evade chaos bag says minus one, so we do evade Ichitaka again as our first action. Second action we are going to explore. Oh, we forgot about that. After you move from a pocket of time to a shadow location or vice versa, take one damage for each clue on it. Okay, so we did take a damage there. Ouch. Okay, so we are going to have... This is going to be hard. <laughs> I think this is going to be really hard. Uh, we've got to find Nakotas, and we've somehow got to discover clues. Um, not liking my chances here, but uh, let's... Uh, Let's draw an encounter card, or let's draw an exploration card. Second action. Uh, we get Moo. Moo has four clues on it. Holy crap. It's one shroud location, but it has four clues. While you are at Moo, the first uh, skull, cultist, tablet, or elder thing symbol you reveal during each skill test gains reveal another token, and it's worth a victory point. Wait a second. Yeah, it is attached there. Okay. Well, we can't move back because that will flat out kill us. So we might as well use... Uh, Ursula's free response to try to grab a clue. Chaos bag gives us a skull. So that's a minus two or minus four. So we uh, we do fail that because we're going to have to reveal another token. We will peek at the top one. It's a minus two. So that's minus six altogether. So that's a failure. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, Yes, indeed, Ichitaka is going to kill us. Uh, no, she won't. We will survive. Uh, Mylan Christopher will die, but we will survive at least one more turn. Uh, let's do another investigate. Chaos Bag gives us a cultist. That's minus two. And uh, we have to look at the top uh, of the... It's another minus two, so that's a total of four. We're five, so we do succeed. Barely. Okay, so we do grab a clue, and we get a resource from Dr. Mylan Christopher, so that's okay. Uh, but we are out of uh, actions, and we still have three, uh, three to go. 
Okay, so enemy phase, nothing happens. Uh, Ichitaka is hanging out. She will ready during our upkeep. We will draw a card. There's an unexpected courage. We will gain a resource. Uh, we didn't fail that time, so we didn't have to place a clue. Add a doom, three, four, five, six out of seven. Not advancing quite yet. We will draw a card. There is the Temporal Devourer again. Four fight, five health, four evade, monster extra dimensional, farthest shattered or extra dimensional location. If there are no such locations in play, it gains surge. Farthest. So what does that mean, farthest? Uh, other world, other world. So the farthest. So if we were to arrange them like so, The farthest shattered or extra dimensional location would be the plateau of Leng. Because it would be one, two. Okay, so we'll dump him here. Uh, he's a hunter, of course, so he is going to be coming after us. After he enters a shattered uh, or extra dimensional location, place one clue on that location. So the plateau gets another clue, not that that matters all that much uh, because we're not going to move from there, but we are going to be taking some damage. I'm not liking Ursula's chances here. She's in a, uh, in a rough spot. Uh, we did draw a card, so we it is our turn. I think we're dead. We're going to take, if we move from Mu, we're going to take a three damage, which uh, basically kills us. Unless we deal with Ichitaka, we're going to take two, which won't kill us. So we're going to have to stay and deal with Mu. All right, let's, let's do it. We'll investigate five versus one. Chaos bag says zero, so we gain a clue. Five versus one. Chaos bag says minus one, so we gain a clue. Unfortunately, we have no extra way of moving to uh, the pocket of time and uh, defeating or and evading Ichitaka, so we are just going to end up, let's just do it again. Uh, five versus one, that's a minus four, so we will have to check, take a peek at the top of the encounter, that's a minus three, so that's a minus seven, so we fail that, so we succeeded twice, so we got two resources from uh, Dr. Mylan. But we did fail that last one. During the enemy phase, Ichitaka will move and uh, engage us and hit us for two damage and a horror. We will take a damage and Dr. Mylan will take the rest. And the Temporal Devourer will move to the pocket of time bad shape. All right, let's finish this off. We will draw a card, field work, gain a resource, add a doom, four, five, six, seven. So we do advance. All right, uh, agenda 2B, the Nexus falters. The electrical currents coursing through the machinery of the Nexus begin to malfunction, sending a shower of sparks into the air. The portal ring overheats. Threads of ethereal light within the portal begin to snap. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. All right, let's do that. There's only one card in the encounter deck. 
or in the discard pile. If Formless Spawn is in play, place two Doom on the Nexus of Nakai. Okay, we need to remove some Doom from play first of all before we get carried away. So the Formless Spawn and that are there. We place two Doom on the Nexus of Nakai. If the Formless Spawn is in the Victory Display, shuffle it into the Encounter Deck. Place this card in the Victory Display. It gets Vengeance 1. Okay, Agenda 3, A, Snapped Threads, Time Shattered of Purgatory, Endless Awful, This is Forever Lost, as you know, Everything Terrifying, False, Different, Are They But, Repeat, Out of Play, Future and Present, Past, Your Moments Changed, Has Continuing, Continuity, The Blink You Time, Each, Between, In Everything, and Reverse, In Order, In Out of Play Actions, Your here got you how recall cannot you, but occurred yet not the things remembered you alter to continue time of flow thee. So it has the forced effect. If an investigator with the relic of ages in his or her hand, discard pile, or play area is eliminated, immediately advance to agenda 3b. And it has a doom threshold of 12. We have to draw an encounter card. It is going to be another Temporal Devourer. He will hang out uh, at the uh, Plateau of Leng. And after he enters a shattered location, we place a clue there. All right, so we've got uh, many, many terrible things to deal with right now. Uh, we are not going to survive another turn, unfortunately. We can evade it. We can try to evade Ishtaka. We can grab. Yeah, we're dead. We are dead because we uh, we can evade Ishtaka, but and grab this clue and move. But we're going to take a hit from the temporal devourer. Uh, regardless of which way we go, and we only have seven health, so we are uh, dead this turn. So I am just going to, uh, we'll just cut to the chase here, and uh, since if an investigator with the Relic of Ages is in his or her hand, deck, discard pile, or play area is eliminated, we immediately advance to Agenda 3B. Shattered Aeons, the timeline collapses, reality dissolves before your very eyes, first to vanish is...